Indian students in the US have never been this delusional. One year of job hunting, uh, I've got one interview by applying with a referral. Because on one side, if you look at H1B salary database, you will see the highest salaries of $650,000 of an open AI stuff. On the other hand, if you look at even meta salaries, max salaries of $485,000. But on the other hand, we have students who are struggling to get jobs 90% without getting placed even till now. On the other hand, when I look and meet Silicon Valley engineers, they see job rate of even 90%. It's just about mindset. Even I was reading the chapter 4 of Diary of a CEO. This guy also talks about you know, the rules of life in which 80% of the work of getting a job, making things happen is just about the mindset and thinking in an abundance mindset. So in this video, today you will learn how to get that abundance mindset in this job market for a student in the US. Chapter one, the herd mentality. Five years ago, when I was in the job market, if I am actually DMing a recruiter, I was actually standing out. I was the one who is rare because everyone is just applying and forgetting to DM a recruiter. But right now in 2024, everyone is DMing recruiters and they are flooded with DMs even 2000 plus per recruiter in these top companies. So you really have to let go that mentality that if you will just go to that job ID and then message that recruiter, you will get a response. That is just luck basis right now, not on the basis of skills. It's just luck that maybe that recruiter is online and they see your name on the top of the list and they will reply. So that's why you really have to stand out and I'm gonna tell you three ways you need to study the data and stand out in your own way and in your profession. So to stand out, let me tell you what currently computer science students are doing and this is what they have told me. So number one, what they have told me is, this resource, which is called the GitHub resource, summer 2025 internship. This is a very popular resource. Everyone is using right now. And do you know where they find these resources? This resource I personally found from the CS careers discord group, which has all the channels made for 2022 grad, 2023, 2024. And you can see how their journeys had been because these group chats had been really helpful for students. And they also have some resume review sessions, some voice channels where you can do some pair programming and also take interviews of each other and maybe do mock interviews as well. So you can find the best peer group for actually preparing for the job market. So from that, I found this GitHub link for summer 2025 internships and it has already like 34,000 stars and it's very popular. But most of you watching on F1 visa will not be able to crack almost a single opportunity from this list. Do you know why? Because out of these opportunities, only one percentage are going to consider international students. And that is the data that I got from F1 hire. And I can proudly say F1 hire is sponsoring this video as well because with F1 hire, we can study the data now. So I'm gonna show you the data on F1 hire website. You can open the website and go to the research tool and I'm gonna go straight to major. After selecting major, I'm gonna select computer science and you will be able to figure out how much computer science students are earning all the data that they have collected through F1 hire and department of labor, you can tell most of the perm cases, most of the companies that sponsor are actually in this list. And you will see most of the perm and H1B cases are filed for these universities like USC is in the top of the list, University of Texas, Dallas, and most popular companies who are filing perm applications are Google, Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook, Intel, Apple, Oracle, Tata, and the list goes on and on and on and on. They have all the data and this is endless list. So you really need to target those companies who have a potential for you in the future and they will consider your application because things are changing every single year. Let me tell you an example. I got my first job at NCR, that is National Cash Register and you may have seen my day in life vlogs there. So they used to regularly sponsor international students but now things have changed. They are sponsoring way less people as compared to before. And that data is also on F1 Hire. So let me show you if I go to, and this is all free by the way. So let's say I go to the company section and here if I search for let's say NCR, and you can see the salaries of H1B holders plus the number of 
perm applications filed and that is in a decrease. It is less by 26% as compared to last year. And you can see the data, you can see the trends and that is updated for you. So next time you apply for jobs, no matter where you are applying for jobs, you will see that data right in front of you. Now, let me tell you this phase two of how you really need to stand out in this new world of hiring, new way of recruiting. So let's start with now LinkedIn or wherever you want to find your jobs. So I'm going to go to LinkedIn and then jobs. And in this job section, let's say I choose, let's say internship, software engineering internship. I go to this list and I have F1 Hive premium Chrome extension. So here I can actually using this, I can see if a company is sponsoring with this tab immediately. So this company is not sponsoring and I can filter it. So the filters are right here. The filter can be e-verified company, H1B sponsoring company, perm applying companies or a company which is H1B cap exempt like OpenAI when it was a non-profit it was an H1B camp exempt and this data is from the history of 10 years. E-verified H1B tells you from the last 10 years of that company how frequently they have been filing for perm and h1b and you will have a more streamlined list of companies you will target and in my journey of applying for even internship in atlanta there's a company called ups and when i asked them that i don't need sponsorship for doing internship they said they want to hire even those interns who can work full time later on so they will not choose you even on an f1 visa who doesn't need sponsorship for internship but they will choose someone who can work potentially full time and who does not need sponsorship. So that's why you really have a small pool of summer internships you can apply to. So that's why these ways really help. And most importantly, my favorite feature is you go to, let's say, Georgia State University and then I choose some of the popular companies where my alumni are there and then I choose Equifax and now I can click on this contact button. With this contact button, I can email some of the HRs. This data is all from USCIS, the HRs, immigration attorneys, and some of the tech individuals who you can email as well, along with some of the alumni. For example, this filter of LinkedIn, you can use by filtering Georgia State University at Equifax as well. So both filters, you can apply and DM these individuals to increase your chances to get in. An F1 hire Chrome extension is not just helpful for these filters, but in fact, you can improve your resume immediately. For example, there is a button called improve resume and you can click on it and it will tell you all the keywords that are not present in my resume. So I have actually uploaded my resume to F1 hire and I can just with a click of a button, for example, this is a product management internship. So of course I don't have product management tag. So I can just, you know, by myself. So for example, in the skills, my skill section is right here. I can click the add button and add product product management myself if I want to. So the moment I added this word, you will see this word becoming green and the match percentage increased to 22%. So that means I am more relevant for this job. And similarly, you can add other keywords as well. You will see something really cool. It has highlighted here, IBM will not be providing visa sponsorship for this position for now or in the future. And this tag is updated right here on top sponsorship not available and then goes to the filter as well in this section right here you can actually go to h1b jobs as well which will actually show you what other people using f1 hire are applying to so these are all the jobs that sponsor for h1b visa as well because all the customers of f1 hire all the users of f1 hire also want sponsorship so these are relevant jobs you can click on the job board now and look at all of the jobs what f1 hire users are applying to and you can apply for these jobs as well. And these are very actively looked at. So this is another set of pool you get access to using F1 Hire. Now, if I go to the research section on F1 Hire, it's really important to know if you are choosing a major. So let's say I am electrical engineering student. I want to see what opportunities I have for my major. I can literally click on this major and see, first of all, this is top three majors in perm cases filed and see where people are working. So I can see most of the people doing electrical engineering 4800 are working in software engineering jobs then other are com component design jobs and then again software engineers and some in hardware engineering and this way i can figure out 
what are the jobs I can actually apply to that I was not. And I can click on this job and see what relevant skills I can tweak in my resume and apply for this job as well. So you are actually now in an abundance mindset and you have much more possibilities you can think of with your major. Now, number three way I want to really motivate you to live in this abundance mindset is if you remember, I shared in the last few videos, few ways to network with others by going to events. For that, I had recommended you all website called Luma, LU.MA, which has events all over the US, if you click on explore events, you can see for any city, for example, Atlanta, I recently uh, went to an event last week. So in that event, a guy who was trying to network all over California told me that he has now learned the skill of actually in a conference, not just talking to people on a booth. Booth pay are most of the people are sales engineers, but he has now the, the skill. Whenever he goes to any talk, in a conference, the person who is sitting next to him, he talks to everyone around him. Not just that, he stops people who are walking here and there. Excuse me, can I talk to you for a second? He has that confidence. One year of job hunting, uh, I've got one interview by applying with a referral at a Fortune 500 company. And all other interviews which I've given, I mean, around six seven interviews have been through networking or reaching out to people or just meeting people anywhere literally anywhere i mean when i say anywhere it can be in a metro it can be in a bus it can be literally on the street so yeah wow to stop anyone in that conference and exchange linkedin connection requests and immediately connect with that person how do you introduce yourself in these events when you stop someone walking ki can i talk to you uske baad kya Right. So, uh, what I realize that when you uh, tell people that you're looking for a job or you're unemployed, it gives a slightly a negative impression on them. So, rather than saying that, yeah, I mean, like when I'm literally introducing myself, firstly as a student. So, I used to avoid was like student, unemployed, hunting, looking for a job. I used to be like, okay, I mean, I am uh, working for a project. Like at that time, I was working for a startup or I was working, uh, I was doing some research, research work at my university. So I used to talk about that, okay, I am a data analyst or a data scientist at uh, UC San Diego or right now I'm working at Digitium. So I'm a data scientist at Digitium. I'm building uh, a rack application for uh, fintech companies. So yeah, show that, that, I mean, you are an expert of your field. You know what you're doing. Instead of showing that you are like a newbie or, you know, a very new person in the US job market or in this ecosystem. So, Hamesha, Hamesha, even though if you do a little, show yourself as a subject matter expert. Very well. And I mean, if you don't have a job, if I mean, if you don't have a job or you, do, you don't have any uh, kind of work you're doing for someone, you can always talk about a project which you have been working on during a course or which you have been uh, doing at your university. So it can just be like, uh, yeah, I am a data scientist or I'm a researcher who has been working on this project. So basically try to avoid uh, basically an impression of a job seeker in your first 10, 15 seconds. And that's the mindset you really need to have. Plus, you really need to, after networking with those people, you have to follow up. You have to make a connection in which you're valuing someone. In one of my favorite networking book called How to Win Friends and Influence People, it is mentioned the two rules to network with anyone is, number one, you need to think of providing value. You have to understand that person when you connect with that person on LinkedIn, see what problems they might be having or how you can help that person. And once you write in that email, hi, I want to help you in any way I can by doing this. When you specify that you saw some problem in, in maybe what they're working on or maybe you can help in some way. And then next, you should mention how they can value you back by maybe giving you a referral. So if you start the conversation like that, your mindset is to give value and in return, they will give you value as well. When I was attending events in San Francisco, I was looking for a place to stay. And somebody offered me a place to stay in uh, Tennessee for free in his penthouse. Wow. So he found out, okay, I'm paying a lot of 
rent here in SF. He was like, okay, I have a house, I have a farm house there. Why don't you just go and stay? इसी तरीके से you have met CTOs and you have done coffee chat. These are crazy ways you can just by saying hi land into someone's penthouse. <laughs> crazy. So can you share some email template like that? A lot of people don't like to read long emails, so I try to keep it very short and crisp and concise. So firstly, uh, subject of the title, I usually don't write as. I mean, जो generic chat GPT देता है application for this role, so I don't usually do that. I introduce myself or I uh, keep it something in between where I'm introducing myself and it's and it's not a sales uh, spam uh, message. Uh, that used to be my subject. Email used to be very simple. Uh, hello, I uh, hope this email finds you well. Uh, introduction, a few uh, pointers about me, how I can help, and That said, would you be open to uh, uh, having a ten-minute chat or anything like that? Kaise? How do you offer them value? So, uh, offering them value is firstly in knowing your uh, strengths and weaknesses. I mean, first when I started uh, sending out these emails, I did a SWOT analysis on myself. So I knew, okay, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? uh what the company wants and i just banana kisi company ke i'll tell you about my skill so my i'm skilled at data analytics i'm skilled at machine learning i'm skilled at uh user research so if i see a company uh who's trying to come up with a product or build a product i can help them uh, do their uh data analytics i can help them i tell them okay i mean what are uh, the processes you are following right now and how i can make them more efficient how i can I mean, a business wants that uh, unke paise bache, or unka kam jaldi ho. So I can do data mining for them. I can do uh, uh, predictive model- modeling for them. So that will save them money and save them time. So, for example, I reached out an investment uh, management company. So what they were doing, they they were uh, doing some manual uh, research about companies. I told them I can come up with a model which can scrape data, uh, analyze that data, and uh, automate your dashboards reports so in that company there was no one who could add this value everyone was from a finance background but i came up with this unique skill which they liked and they took me on board exceptional this is how it should be now number 4 way to achieve that abundance mindset in jobs is you need to learn and share in public so for that use linkedin for example you see my post people are sharing about hackathons you need to engage with them and see what they are doing and share what you are achieving in your job hunt journey and the recruiting journey as well the more you share more people can add value by commenting on your journey and whatever you learning you should share and i can tell you one of my favorite platform called buffer.com so i use that a lot so if you go to buffer.com you can actually post on three platforms linkedin x or even instagram tiktok or any platform you use even blue sky which is competitor of twitter which has been created by the same founder jack dorsey you can post on all three platforms in one click and forget about it so keep posting you can see my calendar on buffer.com i i keep posting you know on all five to six platforms with one app called buffer.com so you can actually share on all platforms with one click by using it and forget about it this way your thoughts are not just in your mind you're teaching someone as well and by sharing your knowledge on twitter linkedin you follow this principle which i learned from diary of a ceo which says by yogi bhajan that if you want to learn something read about it if you want to understand something write about it if you want to master something teach it and you teach it by sharing on twitter by sharing on linkedin by sharing on instagram whatever platforms you're using if you share every single time you will remember it more because now you are thinking about it more and implementing in your life because you only remember if you consume like 100 of content every day you only remember things you actually implemented and teach about it so this system of teaching it in public will help you have that abundance mindset because overall getting a job in this rough market is actually a zero sum game because you're trying to actually take opportunity from someone else to actually grab that opportunity but when you learn in public you relate with and connect with others you are actually living in an abundance mindset because your whole recommendation system on twitter will be about 
job seekers as well will be about YCs, investors who are actually looking for people like you. And with this abundance mindset, among people who are learning in public on Twitter, LinkedIn, you will be able to outstand among this sheep or herd mentality and win in this situation. So I wish you all the best. Go check out F1 Hire with the link in description below because with that you get 10% discount and thank you so much for watching. Thank you.